Welcome everyone. You're watching Coronavirus in Context. I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer at WebMD. We're all talking about the vaccine. We want to know when it's our turn. Where are we going to go to get it? Are we going to go to our doctor's office? Do we have to go to the hospital? Can we go to a local pharmacy? Well, to provide some insights and, and give us some answers, I've asked Kim White. No relation. She is the Senior Vice President and Chief Communications Officer at CVS Health. Kim, thanks for joining me. My pleasure, happy to be here, John. Let's jump right into it. You know, I've heard that uh, CVS and some other pharmacies are gonna be administering and are administering the Pfizer vaccine to nursing home residents, but what about for, for most people when it's their turn and they're not health professionals and they're not in long-term care facilities, are they gonna be able to go to a CVS and, and get the vaccine there? Well, as we get into 2021, that's absolutely our plan. Uh, all 10,000 of our CVS retail pharmacies will be administering COVID-19 vaccinations. That's absolutely what we're intending to do. Uh, of course, that's dependent on vaccines getting approvals, there being enough supply. And I think as, as you and your, and your listeners and, and viewers know, John, um, there will be state by state decisions made about different populations and how things will roll out over time. But I think by the time we get to the spring of 2021, you know, it's absolutely our intent to, to be widely available at retail. And we do expect that there'll be additional vaccines authorized. We have mRNA vaccines, we likely have adenoviruses with J&J &J and AstraZeneca and, you know, even a few more. So do you have any sense, will there be multiple vaccines available at each CVS or will they just get what they you know had in terms of distribution and contracting will someone be able to go and say you know what I want the mRNA vaccine or I want the adeno virus vaccine assuming they're all authorized and in supply by the time March or April rolls around well, I think uh, it remains to be seen. Um, I, we expect that there will probably be you know, multiple vaccines that we'll be providing, but that is really going to be determined at the state level as states get their allotments and as they distribute them to, you know, at that point in time, what will likely be probably you know, more than 20 different partners who will be providing vaccinations, CVS Health and many others by the time we get to the general population. And there's been some change in regulations, haven't there, in, in terms of pharmacists being able to administer the vaccine. Is that correct? Both registered nurses and pharmacists and licensed pharmacy technicians will all be involved in vaccine administration. And that's really good news because, you know, we need all those folks. We need to be out in force uh, and able to administer the vaccine as quickly as we possibly can. But the good news for us is from, you know, a CVS health standpoint, you know, we expect to be able to administer somewhere between 20 and 25 million vaccinations every month. How will people find out? Clearly you don't want everyone calling their local pharmacy and saying, is it here yet? Is it here yet? You know, how do I make an appointment? There are several sites that talk about distribution, but what's CVS health strategy to make consumers, the general public, aware of vaccination availability at a CVS? Well, there are a lot of pieces that will go into that. You know, first is certainly with our in-store presence, uh, 10,000 stores across the country, three quarters of all Americans live within three miles of a CVS. So, you know, we've got the ability to talk to people face to face. Um, I think as you've seen in survey after survey, you know, most Americans tell us they really trust their pharmacists. They've always ranked highly. So we will have that kind of face to face interaction, which is spurred by just the, the kinds of interactions that are ongoing on a regular basis as people take care of their healthcare needs. I can certainly tell you that there has been a massive spike in traffic to cvshealth.com, which has been seen as a really credible and reliable source of information for COVID-19 and for testing in particular this past year. Uh, we are doing a lot of media work. We're working through you know, our own social media and our own social and, and owned channels. We're working through the traditional news media to make sure that we are sharing information as it evolves. Uh, today being a great example of, you know, sort of starting out in long-term care in Connecticut and Ohio. So I think it's going to be tough to miss us. You know, when CVS decides that, you know, they want to bug you or send you a text or make sure you get information, we tend to be pretty good at it. Have you had to purchase and bring in these special freezers for the Pfizer mRNA vaccine? Well, you know, we're actually in really good shape on that front. Uh, we're used to handling, you know, a lot of different kinds of medication. We do have freezer 
capacity at all of our pharmacies. So in some respects, this is business as usual. I think, you know, with Pfizer, Pfizer is ultra cold, but Pfizer has come up with their own solutions, you know, involving dry ice and their special packaging. And, you know, we feel ready. So we are, we are prepared to handle that and all the right accommodations have, have been made, you know, all the right conditions are in place. You've also been a big proponent of we need to get patients back into routine care and that we know delaying care can result in significant consequences, whether it's delayed screening for cancer, whether it's ignoring signs of chest pain or stroke. Talk to us about what you're doing to let people know what options are available to them Mm -hmm. managing the issue of, you know, for a long time, we told people not to come in. Then we told them it's okay to come in. And now it's somewhat back to, you know, we have to balance risk versus benefit. Mm -hmm. What's the latest in, in terms of getting care that folks have delayed for quite some time? Well, that is absolutely an issue for us and, and not us alone. I know that there are an awful lot of of hospitals, of medical providers, of associations who have joined us in this message that you really cannot delay your, your health care. Uh, care for chronic conditions, ongoing screenings, you know, that's incredibly important. And we have seen through our data and our analytics some uptick and some, I'll call it an almost return to normalcy, but it's certainly something that we're encouraging, whether that is face-to-face -face at the pharmacy, whether that's through our electronic communications, through telehealth, where we've seen an enormous uptake, and it's certainly something that we have been promoting through Aetna, through our care managers, our nurses, and those who really are in day-to-day -day contact with our members. And, and what's the role of CVS and others in addressing this issue of disparities? You're gonna be a leader in terms of vaccine distribution. We know that COVID-19 has disproportionately impact minority communities. You talk about that you're you know, three miles from anyone how are you going to work to address the issue of equitable distribution mm -hmm. of vaccination, as well as addressing issues of vaccine confidence, and then overall, in terms of it finally addressing all of us as society, the disparities that have existed in health Boy. really for decades? Wow. That's a lot of questions and a lot yep. of issues kind of wrapped into one. You know, I, That's I, why I asked you on, Kim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would certainly tell you, you know, as it relates to social disparities in general, you know, this has been an area of focus for CVS Health for, for quite some time. We've been uh, running a program, for example, called Project Health since 2006. Project Health actually goes in, in into many markets and into many multi multicultural communities. We do, you know, no cost screenings. We really help to identify, you know, health conditions that require treatment. We try to get in earlier when we know outcomes are always better. Um, more recently, just a couple of other examples, you know, we, we've made a big investment in affordable housing. We know that's a really important piece of social determinants of health, you know, where people live, the environments that they grow up in. So there's been um, most notably some really important work done in Columbus, Ohio, in conjunction with some other partners to make a difference in that particular market. We've invested heavily in free flu vaccines. You know, we know this season in particular, it's incredibly important to get a flu vaccine. In fact, we have administered twice as many of them at this point in time as we did last year. And we don't want cost to be a barrier. So we're taking lots of steps, you know, really at the community level to make sure that we can knock down those barriers to care and make sure that people get the care they need. That's one of the amazing things I think about CVS, given our footprint, given how we are in, you know, local in so many communities and really you know, a, trusted, a trusted provider to people. Now, I want to congratulate you. You're an influencer, one of the top 50 influencers by PR Week and medical marketing and media. But what's really interesting is you started in your current job this year during a pandemic that occurs once a century. So how has that been? You're, you're new to a job and you have to take on communication around a global pandemic. Yeah, it's, it's been fascinating and I am sure I will look back years from now and you know, see this as, as the real high point of my career. Um, you know, it's funny, I started from my dining room table with the advantage of having worked for CVS Health in the past. Mm -hmm. so I had spent seven years at Edelman 
And while I was working at Edelman, I led the CVS health business. So I was very involved with the company when they walked away from tobacco, for example, in 2014, which was you know, one of the things that really made me admire CVS health and makes me so proud to be part of the organization today. Uh, so those pre-existing relationships and the prior knowledge of the company were certainly helpful. But after spending maybe a day or two a little nervous from my dining room table thinking, how will people know to call me? How will they know to bring me in? What I discovered is that we have so much work to do and there is so much happening. And once everybody was remote, uh, that fear sort of abated by about day three. So I've really been thrown into the deep end of the pool. There has been so much to make happen, so much you know, important news and new developments to communicate. Um, so it's it really has been just a baptism by fire. <laughs> And as an influencer, you're going to have a big role in terms of how we inspire confidence in vaccination. What are the one or two things that you think we need to do right away to inspire confidence? Is it to show people like the general audience getting a vaccine and, and choosing it? Is it culturally competent messaging so it's not a one size fits all? What do you think are the one or two things that you say, hey, John, we need to do this right now? Yeah, well, I think you've just stolen a couple of, of good ideas right there. Um, I think the people delivering the message matter a great deal. I think that you know we've got to have a diverse group of credible people who are on the front lines because there is no one size fits all. Uh, well, maybe Dr. Dr. Fauci is one size fits all because I don't know anybody who doesn't think that what he has to say matters and is greatly influential. Um, but you know, we've got to be, we've got to let people at the community level, you know, see and talk with people like them. Um, that matters a great deal, I think, in terms of believability and credibility, and especially when we're talking about uh, black and brown communities. That's a, that's a big piece of it. I think the other piece of it is, is communication that is approachable and accessible and understandable and honest. It's got to be based in the science. It's been so important to us that we be seen as a credible source of information. And I don't have to tell you, of course, a lot about COVID-19 has become politicized. And we have tried to stay clear of that. We are trying to you know, be focused on our communities and the customers and the patients that we serve. And you know, we're trying to be guided by the science, you know, regardless of who's in or out of office. Well, Kim, I want to thank you for providing your insights today for explaining to the public how they're going to be able to get vaccination and, and just overall congratulations on, on being named an influencer. Oh, thank you so much. Listen, it's a really exciting time. And I guess if I could leave your viewers with one message, it's that we're all going to have to be a little patient, but you know, hope is coming and science has done its job and CVS Health has been preparing for this moment and we are ready. And so while the, you know, the vaccine is not available for the general population today, you know, it's on its way and we're gonna be ready to deliver it. It's a great attitude and, and a good message for us to leave our, our viewers with. And I wanna thank our viewers for watching. And if you have a question about COVID, send it our way. You can send it to Dr. John at webmd.net as well as post it on our social properties, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram.